Alrighty guys, what is up? It's Joseph back for another Lego Stars video today. And today, it's gonna be a very important and interesting video. We're gonna talk about investing and Lego investing in particular. Well, Lego Stars investing, to be honest. And like I said, an interesting video. Some important stuff I wanna cover in this video. For one, I'm gonna talk about Lego Star Wars sets in 2021 and kinda of what to watch out for those for investing. For the most part, it's really not a good wave to invest in, I'm gonna be honest, but we're gonna talk about those first. And then, second off, I'm gonna talk about sets you should invest in. And uh, those are going to be more of the summer 2020 sets, that kind of thing. Because 2021 right now, not looking like a particularly good year to invest in for LEGO Star Wars. But anyways, guys, let's jump right into the video, I guess. So as you guys know, obviously 2021 is going to be a very heavy kind of original trilogy wave with a lot of those sets. There's not really any Clone Wars sets, which are usually, you know, your big go-to sets if you're trying to invest. And it's just, it's not really looking like a particular year where it's like, you know what, I know this set is going to be really good. It's going to be worth a lot of money. Like the 501st Battle Pack a few months ago. Um, this year, this wave in particular, not looking like that. Um, some sets that are in this wave, you have the Imperial Shuttle Polybag. You know, nothing really there. It's going to be cheap anyway. You have some LED lights and keychains, which are interesting, but I don't think those are something people really kind of hold on to or are that interested in in the future. So that's not really a go-to there. You have the Resistance 4 Plus X-Wing. Again, 4 Plus, and it's an X-Wing, and it's an ugly set in my opinion. Not really a good set there for value. Um, you do have some interesting sets, like these smaller versions of the TIE Fighter and X-Wing, um, which are interesting, but again, not sets I'm particularly interested in if I'm trying to invest and make the most buck, I guess, you know, bucks, get all that money, um, bang out of your buck or whatever. They're interesting, they're different, um, but I just don't think they're really in, in particularly gonna make you the most money. Um, based off of how many units you buy and such and you know every Lego Star Wars set I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this clear every Lego Star Wars set is going to gain more value as years goes on you know that's just the way Lego Star Wars works it's very safe you know it's not like investing in stocks you're gonna make a lot of money you know and shares and all that but for each Lego Star Wars unit you buy you know you're going to make money and even if you buy this X-Wing that's 50 bucks it's not too impressive necessarily in my opinion it's still gonna probably it's going to be worth more money five years from now than it is now you know they're always going to go up in value which is the nice thing about Lego it's pretty safe and specifically Lego Star Wars but you know yeah you can play it safe and get all those sets and make money or you can get the best set that's gonna give you the best value and you're gonna get the best return and in this case with the X-Wing and TIE Fighter you know they're not bad sets in my opinion and you're probably going to make money but ultimately there's better sets out there that you can make more money in doing so. And obviously, one of those sets is going to be the Mandalorian sets. If you can find any LEGO Star Wars Mandalorian sets you're interested in, buy them, hold on to them. Any Mandalorian set, I can guarantee you, is going to do well. The Mandalorian show is popular. And unless season two is absolutely awful and everyone hates the show and it sucks, the Mandalorian is going to keep getting more popular. Merchandise is going to get more expensive. And these LEGO Star Wars sets, you know, five years from now, are going to be worth a lot more money. So we don't know what exactly the $30 Mandalorian set is supposed to be at the moment. But that is a set that I would get a lot of. Any Mandalorian set whatsoever is a good idea, in my opinion. Um, as far as other sets for this wave, you have the Tauntaun and AT-AT -AT Microfighter. Microfighters, again, aren't really anything too special, um, unless it's like a Clone Wars Microfighter or a Mandalorian Microfighter in particular. This Tauntaun AT-AT -AT thing, it's not something I would invest in or look at, really. It's cool, but nothing much there. And the Millennium Falcon Microfighter, absolute bust. Do not get that. There's already been two made. You know, there's no reason to get another one and try to hold on to that. And I think most people understand that, you know. I think most people can understand that, yeah, this 2021 wave is not particularly strong for investing. Um, you know, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. If it was, that means it'd probably be a lot more Clone War sets, right? Because those are the ones that really go up in value. You know, you look at some of those old ATOT set, nothing is worth a lot of money now. Um, but as far as 2021 goes right now, it just really isn't a lot of stuff there that interests me or interests anyone else. You know, five years from now, is anyone going to really want that 4 plus resistance X-Wing? Sure, but it's really not going to be that. It's not the value is just not going to go up. It's not going to be worth your investment. Um, so unfortunately, guys, I do have to say it's the 2021 wave right now does not look good for investing whatsoever. However, that does not mean that you could stop investing in Lego Star Wars in 2021 or should wait. There's still sets from 2020 that you can invest in and should invest in. That you know, even now, you know, you can probably get a lot of these sets on sale, and they're going to be worth your money. And in the future, they're going to be worth a lot more than what you pay for them now. So let's talk about those actually. So as you guys know, I'm a big fan of investing in Clone Wars and Mandalorian sets. Sets that are basically kind of unique, one-off sets that are based off of, you know, a TV show or a single movie. You know, the original Trilogy Episode 4 sets, 5 sets, you know, those come out every couple of years and they're really not that valuable. Obviously, the big one, oh, first battle pack, get you a bunch of these. These will give you a lot of return. People say, you know, people are getting them, you know, there's tons of them out there. They can say that, but I, I just have faith in this saying. I think that it is really going to do well. And um, like I said, regardless, any Lego Star Wars set always goes up in value. And if one that we know is going to go up in value, it's going to be that 501st Battle Pack, and it's probably going to be worth a lot of money, a lot more than some, any other Battle Pack in the future. The 212th Battle Packs from uh, 
a few years ago worth like $90 a piece on Amazon, eBay. It's ridiculous. And said that's not a terrible idea. It's going to be this uh, Knights of Ren transport ship. It's unique. It's different. It has a couple of unique minifigures. Um, it is from the sequels. It is from episode 9. So it's not a set that I feel like a lot of people are particularly interested in because a lot of people aren't the biggest fan of the sequels or episode 9. You know, it's not like a Clone Wars set like the Falcon First Battle Pack where, you know, you know people want that. But it's unique. It's a one-off site, you know, one-of-a-kind thing that maybe they'll remake a while from now. But it's not a bad idea to hold on to something like that. Not the best idea, but still interesting. I'm not sure if people can still find these around, but if you can find these anywhere, get yourself an ATST Raider. Very nice set from the Mandalorian. Like I said, any Mandalorian set you can have, whether it's a Brickheads, the little child statue, the ATST Raider, that is a go-to set for investing. For my, for my opinion, obviously. These are all my opinion, by the way, of course. Another good set, pretty common sense here. The AAT, another Clone Wars set, a one-off set. Comes with the uh, Ahsoka minifigure and the 332nd minifigure. Really good idea to hold on a bunch of those. Like I said, TV shows, Clone Wars, Mandalorian, that is where you're going to get some big bucks there. Um, this is kind of an interesting set. This one's, I think, not a bad idea if you can find this anywhere to buy and invest in. Uh, the Dual Mustafar, not something that's particularly interesting or really investing worthy for me. Um, but if you have some, you can find them on clearance, you know, get them cheap. I don't think it's a bad set because the last time they made a Dual Mustafar was like 15 years ago. And it's a cool set, it's an iconic scene, it's popular. You know, I think people are going to want that one. It's better than some of the other sets that you can invest in. Anyway, what to avoid? Well, I think we all know. Don't invest in this thing. It's a beautiful model, but the minifigures are not very good. It was 80 bucks for retail, and I'm sure you can find it cheaper in some places. But, you know, really no reason to put your money into this when you can just put it into, you know, like two more in, uh, Fight with First Battle Packs, you know. So, avoid that General Grievous' Starfighter there. Some sets that you might be able to still find. These came out on uh, January Wave uh, a few months ago. These Fire First Battle Packs, really nice. Cheap, reliable. I mean, it, uh, people talked about the same thing with the Fire First Battle Pack. A ton of people are going to invest in these, right? Sure, but I mean, I still think this thing's going to be worth a lot of money in the future. And it's in a Mandalorian set. It's a battle pack. It's cool. It's flashy. It's cheap to invest in. So it's like, you know, if you get a bunch of these, you know, you're going to be making some money in the future. Look at the old Mandalorian Battle Pack. That thing's doing really well. Hold on to some of these if you can. Um, continuing to more Mandalorian stuff. This came out in August. Brickheads. Brickheads are awesome to invest in, especially something like this where it's like a one-off, you know, Mandalorian and a child. I, I need to get more. I only have this one right here. Get a bunch of Mandalorian sets. And um, I actually don't have any of these, but the Razor Crest, that is a great set to invest in. It's expensive, but man, I'm telling you, look at the ghost from Star Wars Rebels, which is actually right there. I have it built right there. Anyways. That set, um, the Razor Crest, if you get a bunch of those, that is going to be worth a lot of money in the future. And that, that ghost I was talking about, it's worth like 450 bucks on eBay right now. I got that for $100 back in the day. I wish I had one sealed because then I could be making, you know, hundreds of dollars on eBay by reselling it. So, you know, um, hold on to this stuff, invest in Lego. I think it's a good idea. Um, another set, the child buildable figure or statue, whatever it is, that's another great set just because it's a Mandalorian. Uh, the most likely Cantina UCS set is interesting because, it, to me, it's a one-off set, you know, like the Cloud City and the Battle of Hoth. I mean, I don't think it's the best deal or best idea, but it is going to make a lot of money. You know, if you hold on to it for 15 years, obviously, 15 years from now, that set's going to be worth a lot of money. So, it is very expensive, though, so you got you to keep that in mind. But it is a wonderful set as well. Um, but I think that, you know, the most value and just, like, in terms of proportions, the most money you can make by buying units, you know, I think the Razor Crest. Falcon First Battle Pack and AAT are the big three that I would spend my money on, and that's what I'm going to do. Really good idea to get those. I know they're kind of hard to find, especially the Falcon First Battle Pack. I cannot find that thing anywhere. The only reason I have one, actually, is because my friend got me one for my birthday, so thank you to my friend. But find them, get as much as you can, stockpile them. I know people are saying, you know, everyone's going to have them, but, you know, everyone should have had, you know, the 212th Battle Pack with a ghost ship, you know. Legos are going to go up in value regardless, so, you know. Maybe this thing, because of all the hype, it's not going to be as valuable as it would have been if it wasn't so hyped up like the Fire First Battle Pack, but it's still going to make money, and if you hold on to it for long enough, find the right time to sell it, you will make money. And just to be honest, like I said, guys, the 2020 wave is looking pretty good for sets to invest into, just because of those two Clone Wars sets and the Razor Crest. As for 2021, though, like I said, the title of the video, it's just not looking too good. It's kind of bleak. I'm going to have to wait, you know, maybe for the spring and summer wave of 2021 until we get some real sets that are worth worthy of investing in because right now the early 2021 wave not a lot of sets in there that i would look into buying i mean you obviously you can get them if you like them i'm probably gonna get a few of them um but like four plus x-wing you know 
Anyways guys, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover for uh, investing in 2021 and LEGO Star Wars and such. And um, just remember, you know, do what you want to do. Ultimately, this is just my opinion. It's what I think. I think most of the things that I think, you know, most people can agree on, like, yeah, the 501st Battle Pack is probably a set that's going to be great to invest in. And also the AAT, you know, because of their exclusivity and hype. So I feel like people can agree on that. But ultimately, do what you want to do. Have fun. If you want to invest in all the 2021 sets, go ahead. I'm not stopping you. Um, and if you don't like investing at all, don't do it. And that's pretty much it today, guys. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time on JT Bricks. Make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.